Okay everybody, this is Stephen Strong again. I just wanted to share a little bit about my cast iron collection. I've had uh, quite a bit more and I've gotten rid of some of it, but I just want to share a little bit about what I have and not just to show off what I have, but I really would like to, to help educate you if you would like to learn more about cast iron. And sure, I'm not the, the expert. I have collected quite a few specifically because of who made them. I live in Alabama and we had a, a company called Al Birmingham Stove and Range in Birmingham that went out of business uh, back in the 80s and they were the derivative of the Atlanta Stove Works. And because of where I live, I figured that the uh, Birmingham Stove and Range, which we call BSR, is probably going to be more available in my area. So I thought if I was going to collect, I want to collect something that I was able to get my hands on a lot easier. So when I first started collecting, it was really hard to find the stuff. I tell you, I was going to yard sales and I was going to estate sales and wasn't finding anything. And then I just, little by little, I started meeting people at trade day who bought cast iron and stores and uh, antique places that had a little more cast iron than others. And I learned where to go to look. And some of my friends who sell it different places like that, they always knew that I would be looking for it. So whenever they run across things, they would collect it up. And then when I get to see them, they'd say, hey, I got this new stuff in. I said, let me see what you got. So it's, it's a learning process. And one of the things I did when I first started is I got involved in some cast iron groups on Facebook, which is a good idea. You have cast iron cooking, you have cast iron identification, you also have uh, cast iron auction groups. Ironman Auction is an awesome place uh, to buy and sell cast iron. It's a group that you have to join, but just learning about it. You can go on the auction site and watch pieces, how they're sold, and how much people actually pay for them, and varying degrees of quality, whether they sit flat, or whether they're a little warped, or whether they're perfect or pristine. It's a great learning place. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't use eBay for that purpose because you can put any price you want to on eBay and there's people selling pans or trying to sell pans that are worth about 25 bucks. And they say rare uh, skillet, $325. And somebody that doesn't know that has more money than they have since may buy that. So I would use the Facebook groups and there's one of, uh, on Facebook, it's called Cast Iron Identification. You can join that group and when you find a piece of cast iron, you can take two or three pictures of it and say, does anybody have any idea what this is? And I guarantee you, there's people on there that just loves the opportunity to share what they think. You'll have people jumping on, oh, this is this maker, this is that maker, and it was made in 1975, and this was made between 75 and whatever. This was made in 1890. These are people that loves cast iron. And those are the kind of groups that you can really learn a lot from. Uh, like I said, the cast iron cooking, uh, get on Facebook and just type in cast iron. You'd be surprised. When I first started, I joined five or six different groups. And I really learned a lot. And there's a couple of things that I did do. I finally went and bought a couple of books. Let me show you what they are. Let me get them right. Now these two books right here have proved to be invaluable. I learned a lot about the maker. This is the Book of Wagner and Griswold. And you can buy them at all different... Uh, this has got the price guide. And a lot of times it will even have reprints. Uh, and here's the other book. It's the it's the uh, Griswold and Wagner, and uh, there is pricing inside of it. And these books have been awesome. Just learning a little bit about the history of cast iron. And here you got a section. It it gets the picture. It gives the picture of the cast iron and the sizes. The and estimated value from the time the book was printed, which is, is awesome. You'll also find rare pieces, pieces that uh, you don't see very often or never see. There's pieces in here that uh, if you do run across them and you know that they're rare pieces, you know how to grab them up. You never know, you might find a piece that's worth three or $400 in a in a, a trade day sale or a, a flea market sale for $5.
So we got all different, uh, just tell you, there's all kinds of information, pictures, price guides. This is just some awesome stuff. It'll tell you, I'm trying to get the light off of it. It'll give you an idea of how much they're worth at the time the book was printed. Like I said, these are two awesome, awesome books that have helped me a lot. Now, I've also used them just to identify. And when I do run across something rare, I can look it up in here. Most of the time I can find it. My collection right now, I have it on the shelf. This is not my entire collection, but this is a good bit. Of course, I have a few pieces that I have stored in the closet, some that I need to be working on, some that I'm, I finished. There's a little uh, skateboard dude made out of nuts and bolts that my sister gave me for my birthday. I did a little bit of skateboarding occasionally. It's not too bad for an old man. But I'm gonna take some of these down, especially my Birmingham stove and range pieces just so you can see them and see exactly uh, how I can tell what they are. Here we go, this is my Red Mountain series pans. They were made, uh, I guess, from the 40s, 50s, and 60s on up to uh, uh, right around the 70s. Uh, these are a little more uh, collectible. Uh, we'll start with my first one. I have a, a number 3S, which is which is kind of rare. It's a number 3 small. It's a little bit smaller than the regular 3. Uh, I have the uh, number 3, which is quite common. Number 5S, which is a little bit more on the rare side. The S is a little bit smaller, and it's a little more rare than the, uh, than the uh, regular size. And by the way, the number four that you didn't see, I had the three S, the three, and I do not have the four. Even though the three and the five is probably worth about, you know, 10, 15, $20, depending on how good a shape it is, the number four is probably worth about $400 in good shape. So here we go. The number five is kind of common. I don't have a number six, but I have a number seven S, which is kind of rare. The S series are rare of the of the uh, Red Mountain series. And here I go. I've got a number seven, which is kind of common. Number eight, which is probably the most common. Everybody used a number eight. I did not have a number nine, and here is a number ten. I uh, do not have the 12. I don't believe they made 11. Uh, I do not have the 14. That's the ones that I'm missing. I'm missing the, the 14, the 12, the uh, 9, the 6, and the 4, I believe. So here you go. This is one of the telltale signs. Right here, Birmingham Stove and Range, their handle has a ridge between the... Uh, the pan part and the, the the hanger handle. And the hanger handle has a teardrop shape, which is uh, uh, unmistakably Birmingham stove and range. And not forget the ridge. And if you notice on all the other pieces that I have, they also have, have the same telltale ridge and teardrop. Here we go again, the ridge and the teardrop shape. That's the same on all of the Birmingham stove and range. That's the way that you can tell the difference. And when you're looking for them, you want to make sure you get one that sits flat. If it doesn't have any wobble, if you put it on a, uh, a glass cooktop and it wobbles really bad, uh, that's the pan that you don't want. You want one that sits flat. Occasionally you'll buy one that sits a little bit crooked and that happens to all of us. And if it sits a little crooked, that's okay. But if you got a glass top, it's going to be a little aggravating because it's not going to heat as even as you'd want it to. Where one that sits very flat is what you want. The flatter, the better. I guess when you're looking at uh, quality, the flatness of it, the, whether it has any pits, whether it is really smooth or not, has a really good surface, 
or if it has any chips and cracks. One thing, if it's got cracks in it anywhere, that's that's a that's a sign you don't want it. Uh, but you don't want to go pay good money for one that has a crack in it. So let's look at our Century Series now. This is my Red Mountain Birmingham Stove and Range. Okay, this is my Century Series set. It's still not complete, but I do have a good start. I have a little ashtray. I don't know if it would go with the Century Series or if it would go with the uh, Red Mountain Series, but I thought it was cute. This is my most uh, put together collection, so I put it with it just to extend it out a little bit. But here we go. This is the number three. And with Century, if you notice, the Century series is always going to have stamped. Looks like it's stamped into the, the, it looks like it's stamped into the metal. But actually it's been stamped into the form, the sand mold when they made it. This is more an automated uh, version. This was made after they got the Dyson machines in. This is during the 70s and 80s and they was really putting out a lot of cast iron during that time. Uh, but your telltale sign with Century Series is the NO, stands for number dot three, and it even has the size, six and five eighths inch. Also, with the Birmingham Stove and Range, you have the ridge. You also have the teardrop handle, which is all the Birmingham Stove and Range skillets have that same thing. Even the chicken fryers, and the larger skillets have this ridge. That's one thing that Birmingham Stove and Range had. So here we go, I got the, the little ashtray and the number three. I don't have a number four. Just like I said before, number four is a rare size. Here it is a number five. Believe it or not, I've got a number six in this one. I just run across this one. You don't find very many of those. To me, I believe it's kind of rare. This one here is in some rough shape. I haven't cleaned it. This is the way you'll find a lot of the pieces. Uh, it's a little bit uh, caked up. Actually, I put it through the lye bath once. It was during the winter time and it didn't, didn't do so well. But this is Century Series number seven. I've got to put it through electrolysis and get it cleaned up and it'll be ready to, to add to the collection. I'm just not leaving it in the collection right now because I just don't want to let the rust get attracted to something else. So here we go. Number eight, the most common one of all. This is the one that everybody's got. If you got a cast iron skillet, chances are it's a number eight or five or three. Those are the three most common sizes. So <clears throat> after the number eight, I have a number 10. I do not have the number 9 in this particular series. It's a little more hard to find than, than the others. It's not extremely hard to find like the 4 or like the nine, uh, like the uh, the bigger ones like the, the 14s. But it's still kind of hard to find. Number 10. And that one sits flat. This one here, I run across this one and it had the lid. A little bit dirty. I run across this one and it had the lid. This is a number 12. Also a Birmingham stove and range and it sits perfectly flat and has a very good surface. The number 14 is one that me and my wife purchased when we were first married. This number 15 was one that me and my wife purchased when we first got married. I think we paid $15 for it brand new and back in uh, 85 or 86. Now I think it's, it runs for about $125. And it sits flat and it's great for pizza and it weighs a ton. But like I said before, to identify the Birmingham Stove and Range, you have the Telltale Ridge, the Teardrop Hanger Handle, and we have this on every one of the others. That's the way to signify or to tell the BSR. And there you go. There's my Century Series set. Uh, I'm only going to be showing you the Red Mountain set that I have, my Century Series set. 
a couple of my cornbread pans and cornbread skillets. I uh, don't want to get too in depth, but this is just the basics. If you're wanting to collect Birmingham stove and range, this is how you tell uh, for most of the pieces that it is BSR or not. Here's another Birmingham stove and range set that I've got. This is one that says it's got made in USA. Can't hardly see it. This was made after 1969. Here's one that just says patent pending. It was made before 1969. Uh, right at, actually made in 1969. This has actually saved Birmingham Stove and Range from going out of business. The, uh, one of the, the foreman's wife wanted a cornbread red skillet that had dividers and, and uh, they told him that they couldn't do that or they didn't want to do that. And he decided to go ahead and make a mold himself and he made one and everybody wanted one. And that was their biggest seller that year. So that's the little skillet that kept them from going under many years before they did. Those are nice little cornbread skillets and they are hard to clean and season. That's a real job on those, to getting those ready, but they make some good cornbread. Here's another of my favorite Birmingham stove and range pieces. It's the uh, corn stick pans. So there you go. I can put four on one layer and four on another. These are also made by Birmingham stove and range. If you notice the neat little handles, this is a telltale sign, it's Birmingham Stove and Range. And also looking at the back, it's got the, uh, the 7SA on it. This in here, if you look at it, it's got little lines on it. This one had a little bit of rust on it when I got it. Here's another with the big letters. It's also Birmingham Stove and Range because of the telltale handles. And it also has the, the uh, seven cups and they change direction. You know, one's going down, one's going up, or left and right, however how you want to look at it. And I got some that are made later, which are like a century, but century series. Uh, the big letters are Red Mountain for sure. I believe the smaller letters are century. Here's another big letter. Some are older than others. These are pretty tough to clean too. You'll really tear your knuckles up on them. Here's another seven. And also just by the handles, you can tell that is Birmingham Stove and Range. And like I said, I have eight of these because that's how many fits in my oven at one time. A neat little trick that I tried here a while back. Whenever you make cornbread in these, you, you don't fill them too high. You just barely fill them up because the cornbread will rise. But I tried something because they match up. I took and I overfilled one. And then I took and sandwiched another one on top of it in the oven and they come out whole cornbread sticks. Getting it apart is not too fun though. You have to have a, a, a knife and, and some really good mittens or you'll burn your fingers. So that's my corn stick pans, Birmingham Southern Ranch. Everything I've been showing you so far has been Birmingham stove and range. I'll probably stick to my other pieces to be showing you at another time, but I just wanted to stick to Birmingham stove and range so I can kind of give you an idea of what it looks like so you know what you're looking for. You know, like I said, when I began collecting, I live near Birmingham, about 60 miles, and I thought that if there was a type of cast iron that I could find uh, readily available would be Birmingham stove and range but I have run across the occasional Griswold and quite a few Lodge, which Lodge is, is not too far north of here. And they've been in business for quite a while and still are in business today. So just uh, be on the hunt. Remember the telltale signs for Birmingham Stolen Range so that when you run across it, you know what you're looking at. And don't forget the hard to finds. The number fours are very hard. The larger pans are even hard to get. Number eights are very common. Number sevens are fairly common. Number fives and threes are very common. Just the in-between numbers are pretty hard to find. The number nines, uh, the big pans, number tens, number twelves, number fourteens, or fifteens, they are hard to, to run across. And when you do, people want a lot for them. Uh, just happy hunting. 
and I hope that you learned something. So thanks for watching. This is Stephen Strong again, signing out.